Greetings and welcome back to Tailspire, guys. My name is Aaron with Nordic Forge Games, and today we start decoration on the longhouse we constructed in the last video. If by some chance you have stumbled upon this video, go back and check out the videos leading up to this one. We establish a lot of our building fundamentals, and also you can see how we created this amazing house we're standing in right now. We are going to start decorating, cluttering it up, making it look like this guy, this dwarf right here, actually lives in it. And unlike the last video where it was an organic sort of process in which we constructed the house. Decorating for me is a little bit more refined and so I've actually broken today's video down into eight tips that we're going to follow in order and it's going to help you when you're decorating in Tailspire make things funner and quicker and easier overall. All right let's get it started guys. And this is our fantasy Viking longhouse that we constructed in the last video. We still need a lot of work on the outside. That's probably going to be a third video in this little series about finishing up your board and making it ready to share. And so tip number one, guys, is something we covered in our first video, and it's use references or inspiration. Just like when we're building our house, we want to have some references or inspiration for some interiors that we can look at and just give us some basic idea of where things and items inside the house should sit naturally. And just have it off to the side, something that you can look at while you're decorating that if you hit a snag or feel confused or not sure where you need to place something, it'll help you maintain your focus. And that brings us to tip two, which is pick out your items that you want to decorate with beforehand. That means before you even start placing things inside, you sort of pile up some items that you like the way they look and you can see them all together before we even start moving them around. And what I like to do is sort of think about it like moving into this house and we're going to grab items and we're just going to kind of set them outside and look at them in relation to the colors that we've already established. So go through each of these sections, pick out your items and just sort of pile them up either outside or inside, wherever you're comfortable. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to cycle through here and I'm going to look at a lot of these different items, which ones I think would match the best. And I'm just going to stack them up as if we're literally about to carry these items through the front door. Seeing them laid out already in the setting gives me an idea of how big they are. And if you pick items you think kind of go together, Set them outside together, see what they look like, see if their colors sort of complement each other or if they're going to be too harsh. Now, the other thing to remember is everything you're picking out, you may not use and you may not have picked out everything you're going to use. So there may be some items we still want to go into our menu and look for. OK, and so these are some of my favorite items I found that I think I would like to have inside. And that brings us to tip three, which is be mindful of colors and shapes. Now, this is something you hear me talking a lot about while I'm building. I try to be mindful of the colors I'm using, making sure there's a variety, but there's also not a lot of dissonance or confusing looking colors. And then shapes and sizes, making sure they're going to fit appropriately where they're needed. For instance, this barrel here is pretty large, but I think I can make it work. We don't want to pick out things that are too tiny yet. We want our main core furniture and decorations. And just looking at everything together, now I can see a few items that I'm pretty sure I don't want to use. This giant lever or lever, it uh, it's just too big. And the same with this chest. I already picked out another chest that I feel like is a little bit more appropriate. It's not as lavish, so we're going to get rid of this chest. And what I'm left behind with is some stuff that I'm pretty comfortable with. And now we can move forward. And in the spirit of moving forward, we're going to peel back our house. And that brings me to tip number four, which is... Just start placing items. Just start placing. Feng shui be damned. Just get the items into your setting. Put them in places that they feel appropriate, and then we can shift them and move them around later without too much worry. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in all the items I placed outside, and I'm just going to start snapping them where I think they look good. I don't worry about clipping and making things fit exactly right. Just bring them inside and kind of put them where you think they should go. It also, for me, feels like I'm warming up a little bit. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like stretching before we really get into the fine movement of everything. We're just getting a sense of where they should go in the space that we've created. All right, that's all my items. I've moved them inside. We've just placed them in just a matter of minutes without any fuss or without any wondering where they should go. Just first instinct where I want to place it. And that brings me to tip five, which is probably the tip or the step that will take the longest. But it's start to create openings and paths, places for your players to move. And we do that by just like in a normal house, there's plenty of room for visitors and people that live there to walk around. We do want to start thinking about playability as we start refining and moving things very specifically and clipping. And this is the step where we want to slow down and deliberately make some choices about where things are going to be. It helps me when I'm decorating sort of think of the house in sections like this is like a foyer or a foyer. 
And then we have our storage area, living area, and then we have livestock area. Another part of decorating is changing up your floor. So for instance here, I think I'd like to do a rug that comes in. Underneath the Morgoth building tiles, we may use it in some different areas, but I just wanted to see how it looks. It may be nice to put a shelf or something hanging on the wall right here. This one bowl is clipping through the wall no matter where I put it. It's kind of weird. There we go. I may put something in this corner later. So I'm leaving an opening there, making sure there's enough room for players to move around. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on those dotted lines. I love this uh, wall hang here. Okay, and then we have a path here. Just to change it up, I'm going to move the wood over to this side. Now, I like these bags of grain behind the stairs here, sort of like maybe it's uh, a place they're storing food for the animals. It's a little bit long. I'm going to clip it through the wall just a little bit. All right, let's look over here. I'm just going to kind of shift things around until I start to like the way they look. And I'm just seeing how this pseudo armor may look next to the desk. I'm not even really sure what this is. It looks a little bit like a feed trough to me how these stacked up would look here. So sometimes just taking multiple of an item and stacking it on top of each other, you can get some different textures. And, and again, on this side, I, uh, I have these two pieces. I'm gonna see how they look put together. Like maybe this is a barrel holding some hay. I'm wondering if we push it down on the floor just a little, could we make it look like hay had been strewn about a little bit? I want it to look a little messier, if that makes sense. Just some random rotations that are peeking through the floor. Maybe we can put another cauldron in here and make it look like it's a water pail for them to drink out of. So we have placed all of the pieces um, that we picked out. And we still have tons of open room. So what I'm going to do now is just continue to duplicate items. Look and see if there's any additional items that may fit the area well overall. The other thing uh, that we didn't grab is a regular table, like where they would sit and have dinner. So I like these four stools. I'm not sure how many people are living here, but I'm trying to see what it would look like if we had a, a bed or sort of a, a little cot next to animal pen. That way, if someone needed to sleep down here to watch over the animals, they could. Animals like apples, and so do humans. So I'm going to put one kind of behind the stairs here, a basket of apples, and maybe one of these small pumpkins. Okay, we have this open area, and part of me thinks we, we need a place to prepare food. What if we had a bar, almost, like uh, where they have these like nice little bar pieces. Oh yeah, having a bellows here on the wall would be kind of nice. I'm not sure exactly what this is. It looks a little bit like a wash pot to me. So there's some books, there's like a, a grain sack and a couple of things of meat. I like the idea of there being a section of carpet here at the bottom of the ladder. It uh, just looks like a landing for the ladder and it also draws attention to the ladder in case any of your players miss it. Now here is a great opportunity for an empty shelf and then we can fill it with stuff that we want. And they do have a smaller shelf with like some wine on it. I do want like uh, something in this corner here, maybe another box or container. This one's always really great. And then I do like having nothing in front of this window and something in front of this one so that this is almost encouragement for an NPC to look out that window or a player. Just keeping in mind the different routes of travel we have through here and the areas in which we can have encounters or movement of NPCs and players alike. All right, so here is our loft. Now, we, we only have the one bed downstairs. Definitely going to be somewhere we want to have a bed or a couple of beds. I'm trying to just weigh the idea of clipping if it looks okay or if I don't like how it looks. And again, I know it's clipped through, but at first glance, it doesn't look clipped through. Kind of looks nice, so I'm going to go with it. I'm just seeing what kind of container we could have in between these beds that's interesting. You know, it could kind of double as like a bedside table. Maybe we could put a candle on it or something later. And I think that's good for the loft. I'm going to stop right there for just a second because I think we're getting close to tip number six, which is add more light. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this, the light section, but there are items in the game that give off light as well. For instance, in the nature section, there are these blue crystals and green crystals that also give off respective light. If we take one of these blue crystals over here to the water bucket and we slide it down onto the ground, the light still actually permeates through and we can create some interesting variations to the light just for fun and to see how it looks. And you can do the same with the green crystal. Generally, most of the lighting is found in the lights section. 
I really enjoy the small candle here because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's small, it's compact, but it puts off a lot of light. I think I may like to put one on this shelf here. Definitely think a candle makes sense here. And then maybe even a hand lantern for the other person who sleeps up here. Hand lantern somebody may grab when they head outside. What would be nice is to set a candle in the window. And then it will also be visible from outside. Tip number six, adding more light. I feel like we've got more light. Things are looking pretty cool. And that takes us right into tip number seven, which is start adding tiny stuff. Stuff that only you may notice. But let's start adding the small things. The things like food and drink, books, papers. Things that overall are even smaller than like a chair or a stool. You know, just keep placing, you know, think back to rule number four. Just keep adding until you're to a point that you're happy with how everything is looking. Comfortable clutter, right? We want it to look cozy. And that brings us to our final rule, rule number eight, guys, which is if you don't love it, redo it. If there's something you place that you don't like how it looks, why would you leave it? If there's something you've already done that you don't like, it's not set in stone. Move it around and make it exactly what you want it to be. You're making up the rules. You're making this your world. And that's what matters most. And that's really it, guys. We did it. You did it. Today, we learned eight awesome epic tips for placing your decor in Tailspire. And as I look around, I'm really proud of what we've done today. We've taken an empty shell and we've filled it. We've taken a house and we've made it a home. And you, and you know what? You know what? No one can take that away from us. <laughs> and so I hope these tips really helped you guys. Uh, I've had a lot of fun day playing and building and creating and actually making this feel like a real world. And so I just want to say a huge thank you again for you guys for watching the video, for hanging out with me for a little bit. It's been awesome. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. And if this is your first time visiting, welcome. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to share this anywhere you think people would enjoy it. In our next video, we're going to be venturing outside. We're going to start getting the terrain ready. We're going to start doing some decorations out there, making the board ready to share for other players to use. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep being awesome. Keep building awesome things. And until we meet again, 